This is the all-new Community Connection. I'm your host, Jade Harrell, keeping you connected to our community. We are preparing to light the night for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's key fundraising campaign. I'm joined today by Jessica Tobin, who is the Director of Marketing with Clarkson Eye Care, Kelly Chu, who is the Marketing Assistant as well with Clarkson Eye Care, and Ben Westbrook, who is on the Board of Trustees for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Thank you all for being here today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, we'll start with you, Jessica, as you kind of are heading up this campaign and how we are communicating the message to our community. Jessica, let's talk about the event this year and the relationship with Clarkson. Well, I wouldn't say that I am necessarily heading up the event. I was going to give you some love, I will. Well, I no, tried. No, so <laughs> Kelly here has been really spearheading the campaign. It was ultimately the decision of me and our CEO, Anthony Nunn. Mm-hmm. We really wanted to find something that all of our employees could get involved in. We've been looking to sort of fill a little bit of a philanthropic hole for Clarkson Eye Care. We haven't had a uh, foundation that we've really thrown our support behind for several years. So Mm -hmm. the Leukemia Lymphoma Society was really a great fit for us. That's wonderful. With such an imprint and a big footprint as well as impact in our community, it's good that you found a place to connect. What made you choose LLS? So LLS really came to us again. It was actually Kelly's idea. Kelly kind of brought it to us. She has been with us at Clarkson since February. And when she started, one of the first things that I said was, I need help with several things right away. And one of them was to find the right charity and Mm -hmm. foundation for us to partner with. So she researched several of them. And LLS really fit a lot of pegs, I guess, for us. You know, Clarkson has 62 locations in the Metro St. Louis area, 10 in Illinois, and the remainder over here in Missouri. And since LLS's footprint, ours doesn't go to Arkansas like the local chapter does here, but it really reflected the St. Louis footprint the same way that our locations do. Mm-hmm. So we could really get involved that way. Sure. I guess. What are um, some of the other pigs that made it a go for you? So we wanted to have something where our offices are open six days a week and we needed something that was flexible. So the light the night walk is perfect for us on a Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. And it's something that not only the employees could get involved in, but they could get their families involved in. We hear that from people all the time. You know, our opticians and doctors in the offices are caregivers and they want to care for people and they have been asking for us to get involved in something. And as soon as we announced that this was going to be our initiative, we had so much involvement right away. People were very excited because a lot of our opticians have people in their families who have been touched by leukemia oh, lymphoma. Yes, many of us. And mm-hmm. people jumped right on board and said that they're going to have teams of 20 people from their family that are going to come to the walk. How do they buy T-shirts. We sold some T-shirts, so we'll have Team Clarks in there at the walk on September 26th. And I believe, and Kelly can answer that, I think we're going to have over 300 employees there. Super cool. And we only have a little over 500 employees, not only, but that is a very good turnout. More than half the company, I believe, will be there with members of their family all there together at what is essentially a free event. That's what's so great about it. They just have to show up. They mm-hmm. make a donation mm-hmm. and then they just show up and have fun. Absolutely. So it fit a lot of pegs, I guess, I'm sure. sticking with that theme. Peg works that, <laughs> Peg works for us. Clarkson I care. Absolutely. All right. Well, Kelly <laughs> Chu, I'm so glad to see you face to face. Now, this has significance for you on many levels. Now, I know in your field as a marketing person that, you know, it had to fit the pegs like Jessica talked about, but you formerly were with LLS and have a family member personally that with good news is in remission. Do you want to talk about your personal connection as well? And then we'll go a little bit more into the event. Sure. Yes. So previously I was working for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and about a year after working there, my dad was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia I really think that God works in weird ways. Mm -hmm. So we were, although it was a a very bad um, diagnosis, we were in a good place. We knew all the resources that we needed. They have tons of educational resources that are written in layman's terms, not jargon. So you can understand it. You can pass it along to family members. They also have children's books. So for our younger cousins, we could pass that along Mm -hmm. to them and educate Mm -hmm. them on exactly what was going on without them being scared. Yeah. My dad was treated over at Siteman, and he was in the hospital for 72 days straight. It was a very long battle, but he's in remission now. He's doing really well. Um, One of the really neat things about this walk is that as soon as he was diagnosed, we got a huge family team together. 
And although he couldn't attend his first year, we all grabbed our illuminated lanterns because you get one at this walk if you fundraise a certain amount. And we stood below his hospital room and we called him and told him to look out and surprise them. And it just made his day. Right. I think it really changed things around. Oh, so certainly. he was motivated to get out of there and do better and, and be there the next year. That's very exciting. So you were able to see firsthand how the resources for what we're walking and raising funds for can actually be implemented and used to make a difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. congratulations for you. And what a wonderful gesture to bring the lanterns <laughs> to him. I mean, that really touched my heart to hear. But that's part of it is we're illuminating uh, what can happen, but we are celebrating our loved ones, but showing our support. So this is very exciting that we can do so. And I see a connection there with being able to see the clock, yes. so I don't want to be too corny, <laughs> but I certainly see a really great connection there. So the event for you as well, you brought this to Jessica's attention, not only because you knew, but it was a good fit. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the event? Yeah, so I strongly encourage anybody who's listening to check out this event. Mm -hmm. I have really talked it up to all of our employees. It is wonderful. There's about 10,000 people that come out to this event, which I know sounds a little intimidating um, with parking because it is in Forest Park, but they do partner with Metro Buses and the Metro Link, and they have pickup and drop-off shuttles all throughout the park, so you don't have to try and cram right there next to the event in Central Fields. Um, they have it wonderfully planned that way. Also, you know, it's in the evening. It's on a Saturday. You can come out and they'll have free hot dogs, soda, water. So you don't have to lug around big coolers and snacks for all the kiddos. Mm -hmm. Just bring them on out. Enjoy yourself. Relax. They'll also have the fabulous Motown review there, which I don't know if you've ever heard them. I know they're that about, if it's got Motown <laughs> attached, I'm ready to jam. They're about a 12-piece <laughs> band, and they will rock your socks mm -hmm. off. They are <laughs> phenomenal. So even if you can't do the one-mile route, uh, the walk is a one-mile route, you can stay in the field and enjoy the live music. So mm -hmm. it really is. It's for all different ages to so just come out, enjoy a beautiful night. September is always lovely weather. Yes, yes we are fortunate for that. Well, Ben, let me toss to you. Now, we talk about a personal connection. Right now, your baby mm -hmm. is in remission. He is, yes. So share with us a little bit about your story, and let's talk about the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society that you have committed time and energy to to be on the board of trustees. Okay. My wife and I have two babies. One is uh, almost eight. She'll be eight on October 8th. Hey, and hey. Liam, the youngest. Oh, this is her. What do they call that? That her, year. Her golden birthday, her yes. golden year, yes, I have, yes. I have been reminded of that many times <laughs> this year. It's going to be a good one, it yes. Is. What is her name, by the way? Her name is Audrey. Hey, Audrey, okay. Yep. And I'm then, saying that because she will hear this. Oh, yes. Miss Jade <laughs> says, hey, little Audrey. <laughs> She'll be very excited about that, too. <laughs> but yes, and then there's... And then there's Liam, who is the uh, her, her little brother. And so it was uh, April of 2014, so a little bit over a year ago. Liam was diagnosed with ALL. He was three, three and a half at the time. Wow. And um, it was kind of a, it was a big surprise to me. He had picked up strep throat. It was probably back in early February. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we took him to the doctor, went through the antibiotics and all that stuff. Right. Like you usually do. It seemed like it went away. And then after the antibiotics ran its course, it came back. And so he went back again, got him on different antibiotics, you know, this same sort of thing. Looks like it went away. He started feeling better. And then the strep came back. And by the third time, you know, we were trying to figure out, you know, we had really no idea what it was. Um, you know, we thought we, it might not have been because we had, might not have changed out his toothbrush or something like that. And it was still kind of lingering somewhere. Oh, yeah. But eventually we noticed that he had a big welt on his hand. It was a big, a pretty big bruise. And all he had done was kind of bumped it gently. And so we took him into the doctor and his pediatrician recommended that we do a, a complete blood count or a CBC. Mm -hmm. And then um, we did that, I think, on a Thursday and he said he was going to get the results back to us. Actually, we did that on a Friday. He said he would get the results back to us probably Monday. And then he called my wife on Saturday morning, which was, you know, you never really want a call from a doctor on a Saturday morning. Exactly. But um, then he said that, that his counts didn't look good at all. And we needed to just take him in like right away to the hospital. Oh, wow. Um, so that was on, I believe, Saturday, April 5th. And so we did, took him into Children's. And he ended up uh, spending... 39 days there. In, from that moment. From that moment, yeah. I don't think folks realize how fragile these moments can be. That in one instant, oh, your yeah. Saturday morning, yeah. you know, everything, everything completely changes. can change. Yep. And here we're talking about a blood cancer mm -hmm. specifically. 
Yes. Yes. Continue. Yes. I mean, he, we were in for what they call the induction period at, at Children's, and, and we were there for 39 days. It was, you know, kind of an intense chemo and steroids, which the steroids kind of had some interesting side effects for a three-year-old. He would be up at, you know, three in the morning, wanted to eat chicken fingers. It was, <laughs> he would go through different stages. So for a few days, it was chicken fingers, and then it was Taco Bell, and then it was tuna from Subway. <laughs> so you always had, you didn't know what you needed on hand, but you needed to have something. But then, you know, he was in remission when we left after on the 39th day, That's what which was me. awesome. Yeah. Yes. And he's been in remission ever since. So super. Yeah. Yeah. Super he's, kid, Liam. He, he is an, uh, an amazing kid. Yes. yes, he is. Trooper. Yes. And I share his love for Taco Bell. <laughs> Tuna and chicken tender. Yeah, that's, so, that's still comprises three. most of his diet. So. <laughs> that is to be expected. Way to go, Liam. But you're also on the board of trustees, so share what LLS does and why. Actually, the big reason that I joined the board of trustees that I was interested in is when we were in the hospital, I looked up the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Sure, and, you had to. Yeah, and I think we got some of the uh, information. I signed up for the email list, and I remember receiving an email that was talking about ALL specifically and that when the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society kind of got going, which was about 60 years ago, the survival rate for kids or, you know, people who are diagnosed with ALL like Liam were, was about 5 to 6%. Today, it is 85% plus. Super. Yes. Because of the resources, the research. Yes. And the treatments that have come from the work that they've done and the funds that they've raised. Exactly. exactly. Were they a big support for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we knew that. <laughs> you couldn't very well say no as no. on the board, but, but no. personally, but, that could have been a reason why you got on the board, but it, sometimes I realize how great these questions can be. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I met with the executive director, Debbie Kirsten. We had lunch one day, and um, when I was kind of, I had emailed about an interest in, in joining the board. And, mm-hmm. and after meeting with Debbie and knowing, you know, what an actual impact you can see that the research and, and the money that comes from fundraisers like Light the Night makes. I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer in terms Absolutely. of getting involved. So Absolutely. And this is why we walk and light up the night. It's a key fundraising campaign that exists to find cures for blood cancers and to ensure that there's access to treatments for all blood cancer patients. That's everyone. Uh, we also want to be sure that we thank Rich Heppy of NIDEC, who is serving as this year's Corporate Walk Chair. And, of course, Kelly said so eloquently at Forest Park Central Fields on Saturday, September 26th. The goal this year, then, is to raise $1 million. Yes. I believe that can be done. And the need is there. There is a tremendous need. But what is your hope, your personal hope, for people in this walk this year? I think, you know, to, again, first of all, raise as much money as possible to bring sure. to bring awareness to the issue. And, you know, from a, maybe another perspective, to celebrate the fact that so much progress has been made. And, Absolutely. And that, you know, kids like Liam and, you know, adults like Kelly's dad are in remission and, and have a good chance of staying there because of the progress that's been made with research and development and cures and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, not cures, but, you know. Well, why not? Hopefully some days. I believe that there can be. As a community... What can we do to best support? Show up, mm-hmm. come out tonight, tonight, and, and enjoy. Um, now, this is a key campaign for this specific event. Is there an ongoing effort that you'd like us to plug into as well? You can always get online and go to the LLS website and, and donate there. There's other events, not to get too far ahead, but the uh, Easter egg hunt that's yeah, out of Queenie Park bad, yeah. is, <laughs> is great. You know, that's another big fundraiser. And mm-hmm. the Man and Woman of the Year campaign, which is something that'll, that, that goes on for, I want to say, five or about three months Mm-hmm. of the year roughly mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. another big fundraiser right item, and you'll so. notice those billboards in and around the city so that'll also keep uh the lls uh top of mind kelly a goal for you as well what is the your call your invitation to us all uh for this event on september 26th yeah so i think what is so great if you bring your family out to this and you've been touched really by any cancer is that you're given these Illuminated lanterns and red is for supporters, white is for survivors, and golden is in memory of those that have passed away. And you see this field filled with about 10,000 people with all of these illuminated lanterns. And it's just so inspirational to know that you're not alone. Yeah. You have all of these people out there that have been through something similar and they're there to find a cure. Yeah. They're there to put an end to all these sad stories. Mm-hmm. You've got a, a good outcome so far, but as you were saying that, I could see the passion in your eyes. Thank you. What are you feeling right now when you think about that? You remember seeing those lights, and it did move you, huh? 
It's a very emotional evening. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of golden illuminated lanterns, mm-hmm. and that's in memory of those that passed away. And I just hope as the years pass, we see less and less of them. We see more of the white yeah. lanterns for survivors mm-hmm. and, uh, of course, more of the red ones for supporters. Absolutely. So. But all three represent hope mm-hmm. and um, opportunity for us to make a difference here. Jessica, I'll give you a chance to give your invitation as well. So I really think, again, the best thing, and I think Kelly said it well as well, is to show up and to bring as much awareness. I think that I've been really surprised. I've worked for Clarkson Eye Care for five years, and I have met every one of our employees on some level. And even though we're all spread out across about 70 buildings with all of our locations and support offices, we all do not get to see each other every day. And I think that from a corporate level, I would really encourage any other corporations to consider light the night and to consider the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society because I've been so surprised, not just at the level of involvement, but Kelly and I have both been very touched by people that we've known and spoken to every day, that we work with every day, and they have a family member and they have someone that has been touched by leukemia or lymphoma. All cancers, unfortunately, everyone knows someone touched by cancer, but specifically, Mm -hmm. I never knew that there were so many people in an unexpected way. I think it's kind of brought some of our employees a little closer together, knowing that about them and stepping up and helping us stuff t-shirts to the rest of the company and get raffle tickets out and things like that. People are so on board with it and it has really sparked a conversation within our company. So I really Mm -hmm. would encourage any other corporation to get involved because I've been very pleased with how they've worked with us and allowed us to get involved at whatever level we can. Excellent recommendation. Jessica Tobin, Director of Marketing, Kelly Chu, Marketing Assistant with Clarkson Eye Care, and Ben Westbrook, who is on the Board of Trustees with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Our goal is to raise $1 million to cure leukemia, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, myeloma, and to improve the quality of life for our patients and their families. You can find out more information at lightthenight.org slash GAT for the Gateway Chapter, lightthenight.org slash GAT. You can also call 314-590-2265 for more information. That's 314-590-2265 for more information. Festivities begin at 545 on Saturday, September 26th. You can check in at 5 o'clock at Forest Park Central Fields. There are vans, transportation, hookups. <laughs> Pick up shuttles Pick and drop-offs. shuttles off. and drop-offs. The Remembrance Ceremony is at 6. The Survivor Parade and Picture is at 7. And the walk begins at 730. Again, call 314-590-2265 or visit lightthenight.org slash G-A-T. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you sharing and encouraging us in this event. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. Good all right, that's it for this week. If you have questions or comments or have something you'd like to include in the community calendar, you can leave a message on our message box at 314-333-8369, 314-333-8369. And for more information about our show or any of our guests, you can visit us online and listen to the podcast at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And search Community Connection with Jade Harrell. You all be blessed, do blessed, and take care.